Hello students, let's go on to video two in our, our series on probability and calculating probability of a single event. Um, this time it's going to be a little more complicated than that six-sided die example because we're going to have to use permutations and combinations to figure out, and then what we're often going to have to use is to figure out the total number of possibilities. Okay. Um, for instance, oh, hold on, let me write this down. You, of course, can pause the video. Um, but, but often permutations and combinations are going to be needed to calculate parts of the fraction, sometimes even the number of positive outcomes. Okay, So for instance, in this problem, Community Center hosts a talent contest for local musicians, and on a given evening, seven musicians are scheduled to perform. The order in which the musicians perform is randomly selected during the show. So what is the probability that musicians perform in alphabetical order by their last names? And we're going to assume here that no two musicians have the same last name. Okay, so... First things first, how many different possibilities do we have? Notice that we're talking about a situation where we have seven musicians and we're going to line them up in alphabetical order. Okay, So in other words, this right here means that order matters. right? And I hope that sounds familiar after the last few days of working on problems. That means that we're working with a permutation here. Order matters. We have a group of seven musicians, and we're going to put all seven of them in order, right? So there are a couple of ways that I can look at it. First of all, I could write it as 7 NPR 7. In other words, I have a group of seven. I'm going to align them up in order matters, and I'm going to use all seven of them. I could type this in my calculator. And if I did 7 NPR 7, 7 math menu, Probability, there's my NPR button, right? Seven, that's tough to see because that glare. I get 5,040. Or I want you to notice that in this situation, I could build a little diagram, and some of you guys will find that easier. And I could say, okay, first person, I have seven choices to choose from. Second person in line, I have six choices, then five choices, then four, then three, then two, then one. That's really the same thing as seven factorial, right? And so if I do seven factorial, Math menu, probability, there it is, option four, 5,040 choices. You pick a way that makes sense to you, okay? So um, seven people chosen seven at a time. I have seven factorial. That is 5,040 choices. Really, all we've done so far is we found then the bottom of the fraction, right? So there is the, uh, there's the first part, okay? Now, the second part says that, you know, how many of these actually have them in alphabetical order? And this might be a little bit more complicated, but, but really, if you think about it, listen, if I've, if I've got um, a guy named Smith and a guy named uh, um, Johnson and a guy named Jones and a guy, you know, if I have seven musicians, there's only one way that I could possibly line them up that has them in alphabetical order. And so in this particular example, the top of the fraction is 1. I've got a 1 out of 5,040 chance that I'm going to choose the correct alphabetical order for this problem. I could convert that to a percent if I wanted to or a decimal if I wanted to, but do note that 1 divided by 5040 is a pretty tiny number. That's 0.000198, okay? Or 1.98 times 10 to the negative fourth power, okay? So we're probably going to leave that one as a fraction. Now, even more complicated. Let's say that you're friends with four of the musicians. What, are the, what is the probability that the first two performers are your friends? Okay, so in this problem, whoa, what much more difficult here. Okay, the first thing we have to consider is this. Um, as I go through and I line these people up, I'm interested in the first two performers, right? And order matters. Bob then Sally is different than Sally then Bob. Okay, I mean, sorry, sorry, order doesn't matter because I'm only interested in the first two performers and I don't care if it's Bob and then Sally or Sally and then Bob. If Bob and Sally are my friends, then it meets the criteria, right? So in this case, order doesn't matter. So this is going to be a combination problem. This is a combination problem. Okay, um... Let's see here. Total number of possibilities. I have seven musicians to choose from, and order doesn't matter, and I'm interested in 
two of them being chosen, right? The first two. So what that's going to tell me, if I do 7 NCR 2, that's going to calculate then the total number of possibilities that I have for the first, for out of the seven musicians of the first two. That's going to tell me what I need for the bottom of my fraction. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 7, math menu, NCR 2. That tells me I have 21 different possibilities that I could have. So um, I, I could draw a diagram, but man, the diagram would be huge. Out of the seven musicians, um, there are 21 different possibilities for, for having two performers at the beginning. Okay, Bob and Sally, or Bob and John, and John and Sally, or so on and so forth. Okay, out of those, then, um, if I'm interested, then, in my four friends that I'm going to choose between, how many ways can I take my four friends and have them be two of the four at the beginning? So in other words, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm, I'm interested in two musicians, but this time, oh, I didn't realize it's kind of off the end there. This time, I'm only choosing not from a group of seven, but from my four friends. And that's going to tell me the bottom of my fraction. And so if I go on my calculator, or the top of my fraction, excuse me, I go on my calculator, and I do four NCR2, that tells me that I have six different ways that I can group my four friends. So I have 21 ways that I can group in twos. 21 ways that I can group the seven musicians, six ways that I can group my four friends. I've got a six out of 21 probability that two of the first seven are going to be my friends. That reduces, by the way, always reduce. And on our calculator, an easy way to do it is just to type six divided by 21. It gives you a decimal. So 28.5% chance, 28.6% chance, 0.286 if I want to look at it that way. Or I can go to math, fraction, hit enter. And it's a 2 out of 7 is what that reduces to. Maybe you didn't need a calculator for 6 over 21, but there will be times later on that you do need it because the numbers we're going to be working with, like 5,040, they're going to get pretty big in a hurry. So that one, once again, more confusing, isn't it? Right. So the permutations and the combinations are going to help us to figure out what we have in the top and the bottom of the fraction. As we work through the homework, these are the problems that I'm probably going to need to assist you with. And that's cool. That's what my job is. Right. So we'll be working on these in class and expect to spend a bulk of your time on this type of problem.